Hello! It's meow time for Kittenous Beasts gaming videos for cats and their people, Katsalanda Prime, Episode 9. I'm very excited about uh, doing today's episode. Um, we've made some progress and we're firmly into the mid game now. Uh, and the plan for today will be to try and solve a few problems related to uh, our carbon dioxide management of the recently completed power plant and um, dealing with uh, some some water issues surrounding that uh, carbon dioxide management. So let's take a look and see if we can make some progress on uh, these issues. Uh, Last time I was so excited about refining some gold, and rightfully so, uh, the gold is going to be really, really a useful resource. Um, again, we are dealing with uh, some high temperature runoff from our refinery. Uh, this is dumping 36 degree water, it took in 30 degree water, so it's a significant increase in heat when we refine that um, gold. So, uh, I had remarked last time that we had filled up the base with, this part of the base, with this carbon dioxide gas, largely from this uh, petroleum generator. Um, just looking at the, the details here, it consumes um, ethanol, uh, and it releases 500 grams per second of carbon dioxide along with 750 grams a second of polluted water. It also will generate heat which we need to be cognizant of and in fact it kind of makes me think perhaps I could even do a little bit of heat cooling with this uh, ethanol that I have here. Notice I'm using the ethanol to cool off this machine. Could I also use the ethanol to cool off the generator itself. Why not? So uh, I may go ahead and see if I can make that little modification to my system here. Um, don't want to jam up my system and cause it to stop functioning, but just trying to think, how could we make that work? Let's go ahead and save that one for a little bit later, because after all, this generator will not be running so so much right now without me queuing up refinery tasks. A little too late on my automation of this lamp, but um, that will help the refinery be more efficient in the future. So let's talk about solving the issue with the carbon dioxide. So, um, you know, we've got this little vast chamber here of carbon dioxide and um, we want to get rid of it so we'll go ahead and lean on the carbon skimmer for this task um, and what i'm going to do is i'm going to build probably two of these machines uh, the carbon skinner skimmer um, i can't see the details until it's built but i believe it consumes 300 grams per second of uh, carbon dioxide and this generator produces 500 grams a second so I'm sure I could get by with one for a while but might as well just go ahead and build two to avoid any serious issues with the carbon dioxide so uh, we'll do a little bit of um, automation with this construction project so uh, take a look at how we set that up take down this little ladder and what we'll do is we'll place our skimmers on some metal tiles and I think I might put them both maybe one here one there yeah that'll probably be fine okay just to make it a little bit easier to access after all this is a hostile atmosphere you kind of notice now why I put these salt vines here. They are consuming this chlorine gas that's being pushed up by the carbon dioxide. So 
you know, putting those salt finds there is going to eventually delete that carbon dioxide from the uh, base. Or not carbon dioxide, uh, chlorine gas. Okay, so we've got our files set down. So we'll put our skimmers in place. I'm going to go ahead and just use um, iron for the skimmers. Sorry, Lindsay, it's a little bit nasty down there, isn't it? We're going to work on that. Um, so, uh, we're going to need some sensors also. So, I'm going to use a gas element sensor uh, to ensure that there is carbon dioxide in the chamber. There and an atmosphere sensor to ensure that the pressure is appropriate. And we'll use an AND gate in this situation to control uh, the, the automation so that both of the uh, conditions are met. So uh, when the atmosphere sensor and the pressure sensor are both green, that will fire off our uh, carbon skimmers. We've already got a wire down there, so it's no trouble at all to hook them up to the power. So so we've taken care of the electricity for the carbon skimmers, and we've taken care of the automation piece for the carbon skimmers, but unfortunately for a carbon skimmer to work, it requires water and will output um, polluted water. So, um, let's set our thresholds here. I want this to turn on if it's above, say, 800 grams of uh, pressure. And I want this gas element to be detecting carbon dioxide. So, if the carbon dioxide gas is stable at this height, and there are 800 grams of it, or the pressure is 800 or above 800 then both conditions will be met and both of the skimmers will then turn on and process carbon dioxide so this is going to allow us to manage the carbon dioxide gas pretty efficiently but unfortunately without water neither of these machines will work so that kind of takes us back to our previous problem where are we going to get some water well, unfortunately, I deconstructed my water sieve so that I could get this refinery set up in a more ideal location. Um, so now I'm back to the drawing board. Where am I going to put this uh, water purifier? And I'm thinking I may as well just go ahead and put it over here. So, um, yeah, let's... Let's let's work on the water purifier being over here. Although uh, I'm going to be hand wringing about this for a few seconds. Please uh, forgive me and my uh, inability to make a decision right away on this particular one, because um, I don't want to have to tear it down and build it again. You know, honestly, I wish I could get in here. You know, it's not that dangerous. Well, we're still trying to deal with these germs over here so we're not ready yet to go over here i think but look those germs are getting beaten there's only a few tiles now with high concentration of slime lung so we have slowly won the war against the slime lung haven't we it's taken quite some time but we're nearly there so back to the matter at hand the water sieve Okay, so we do have a polluted water stream up here. Um, and so I think what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and draw the water off over here for the water sieve. All right, so we'll get our input over there and our output. Uh, yeah, let's line that up. Perfect. Okay, so we'll... Um, draw the water over there and then our output water will head um, 
We're going to need a little bit of additional tweaking here. Another bridge to open up a spot. I'm tempted to put another bridge in, and I will do it. Okay. Just want a nice straight shot down with this clean water. Okay. So the clean water will then drop straight down. And uh, trying to reduce my complications here as much as possible. Uh, I think this will be fine. In, in. Great. Okay. So that's going to solve the issue with the, uh, the water, the pure water that we need to run these machines. Um, then we need to get the waste out. So we'll go ahead and just connect that with that um, output there. And hopefully this won't cause any disruptions to the uh, refinery, if the refinery is going to be running and so forth. So let's let them do their work and put these pipes into place. And we'll be in business in no time with that uh, water sieve. Okay. All right, so with the water and the um, carbon dioxide management handled, that kind of then opens us up back into the idea Let's lean on using this generator and finally get rid of this hamster wheel so that uh, Bert can finally be in a sort of state of retirement in terms of his uh, hard work on that hamster wheel. <laughs> uh, so let's go ahead and uh, start talking about the power system. So uh, we've got this heavy watt wire here on the generator side, and then we've got this silly thin little baby wire for the rest of the base. And again, we're running the whole base on one circuit, which is not sustainable at all. Uh, and so it's time now to segment our circuitry. And we can do that using, um, using a little bit of uh, automation and some of the power components that we've researched. So I'm going to let this battery drain all the way out. so I can deconstruct it without feeling bad about the power inside of it being removed from the game. <laughs> I like, like to let my batteries drain before using them. I'll go ahead and disable this generator, so... Alright. And that battery is nearly out of gas. We have another oxy fern. Put that in place. Forgot that last time we dug up that oxy fern over here. So, got to take advantage of the benefits of it. All right. So. Our carbon skimmers are nearly ready to fire, although it looks like we're out of aluminum. Got to stop the aluminum um, usage for uh, wiring. We should really be on gold. So maybe I'll just redo this wire real fast. did refine a little bit of aluminum here and you can see how much heat this is going to make so the look at that 57 degrees Oof, that's hot all right that battery is drained and now it's time for us to set up that new 
power system I was talking about. So uh, we will eventually want a jumbo battery or two on the network, but these smart batteries work better. Uh, they only produce 500 DTUs. These big old batteries produce um, 1.25K. So over double the heat is produced by these big uh, batteries. Um, but they do hold more charge. These only hold 20,000 kilojoules. These hold 40,000 kilojoules. We don't need them right now, so let's take it out of the network and talk about the circuit we're going to build. So, um, clean up some of these wires. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and plug in a, um, a smart battery and a transformer into the network here. Um, and again, this is a little ugly. I'll probably rebuild a lot of these components eventually, but I'm really just trying to, you know, muscle my way through. So let's just go ahead and set it up. That's one of the bigger challenges about this game is, you know, you want it to look pretty, you want it to be perfect, especially if you've played into the late game where you're able to really design things exactly as you wish. But early on, you can't try and go for perfection. You really just need to do what you can do. So um, let's go ahead and throw a large transformer down. We're out of space, so this is not going to work over here. I might be able to build, well, maybe got automation over there and so forth. Let's see if this is good there. Yeah, that's a mess. I can't build it over there either. Um, all right so where am i going to build this okay all right fair enough let's go ahead and go that way it's not going to be pretty but like i said get over it let's make it happen all right so we're going to put our large transformer here as soon as they're done yeah, okay. And we're going to put a smart battery here. Alright, so the heavy watt wire is going to connect into the transformer. This is going to be horrible for the decor in this area. Just absolutely atrocious, but we're going to have to do something here. Okay. So we've got the power transformer hooked up. Next thing to do is to set in some automation wiring. Okay. And we're going to set this to uh, again, 8515. It's kind of like what I like to do with these pieces of circuits. So let's do that. And last but not least, Hook that bad boy into the network. Okay, so let's talk this through once they've finished this build. We're back online. Let's talk about it. So, the heavy watt wire from the generator side of the circuit feeds this large power transformer. Okay, so you probably noticed that there is a small transformer, right? Let's talk about that. The small transformer produces a thousand DTUs of heat and it um, will juice up a wire with a thousand watts of power, okay? The large power transformer produces the same amount of heat, but pushes out four kilowatts of power. So it's four times faster. Okay, so I'm using a large power transformer so that the amount of heat produced is as minimal as possible for this execution. Um, so let's just review really quick. So the heavy wire goes into the transformer from the generator side of the power network. Then the small side of the transformer connects to my sub network. So now this smart battery is on that sub network and tells the transformer when to actually draw power from the generator network. So the smart battery is governing the flow of power through the transformer. If you're setting up a power network and your transformers are running nonstop, 
you're going to create so much heat, it's going to be crazy. It's totally unnecessary. You hook up a smart battery onto the circuit side and control your transformer that way, you're going to have way less heat and way less wasted energy. So keep that one, uh, put it in the bank for yourself uh, if you're going to be trying to progress uh, very far into the game. So again, we haven't really changed too much about our circuitry here. Uh, we're still on one large power network for the whole base, which is again, not sustainable, but that one network is sustained now by the generator. So now uh, Bert is not gonna need to run on this manual generator ever again. Um, the petroleum generator will power that network from now on. Where's all that polluted oxygen coming from? Jeez. It's getting kicked up by these, um... Alright. Okay, so our oxygen production is a little under, but not terrible. And now I'm kind of concerned by all this polluted oxygen that's being kicked up. I'm not sure where it's coming from. Probably just from the chamber below, but... It'll need to maybe put back that deodorizer. And, um... Just do that real quick. Yeah. All right. And let's just just checking on how things are going here. Um, good ish we've got our all of our duplicates are now without any chores amazing um so one of the reasons why we automate a lot of this stuff is to free up duplicate time so uh it's time for us to start to address some of the other issues uh, of the game now that we have this power s network set up and the circuit we start want to start actually making some progress on some other things. So a uh, couple of things to look out for here. I uh, have the Bermuda Triangle of Neutronium right here. We've got Neutronium here, here, and remember our Aluminum Volcano? Wow. So we've got several small geysers all in this small zone. Um, and I'm curious to see what those geysers are. That's kind of the exciting thing. What did we wind up getting to help our colony? Uh, we'll find that out eventually. Seth, definitely worth trying to crack into this part of the, the map to get access to that. Um, other things that I'm just kind of looking out on the periphery for, besides the geysers, just what do we got over here? Some more uh, unknown here, right? Nothing really inspires the mind around here, so I'm thinking we're probably going to wind up maybe drilling down a little bit and trying to establish more of a power structure inside of this part of the map. Um, again, and uh, that was part of my original plan, right? build the corridor here, industrialize this area of the map so that the heat is far away from the main base. So everything is kind of going along those lines, which is great. Um, so with the power network set up, we can now sort of uh, stretch our legs a little bit and talk about ventilation. So. I have this rust deoxidizer and this sublimation station providing a strong oxygen pressure. And uh, what I want to do is take advantage of that and turn it into a little bit of uh, ventilation automation. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and extend few tiles over and start to plan on building into a ventilation set. 
gonna go with two pumps to get a full kilogram of oxygen per uh, per transmission. Now the wiring. Notice the pumps take 240 watts of power. Eee. Um, I'm tempted to run some heavy watt wire right up there, just to just nip it in the bud, just pull it right from the generator. Um, so that I don't have to have several sub circuits. So that's actually what I'm going to do. Let's do it. Uh, we'll pull that, try and make it as least, the uh, least amount of ugliness possible. All right, fabulous. Right. So, uh, similarly to our circuitry for the skimmers, we want to govern the control of these pumps in a s sort of similar way. So, uh, what we'll do is set up some automation here. And again, we are going to be using the AND gate. All right, if the pressure and element are correct, then both of these pumps will run. Set the gas element to oxygen. Set the pressure to above Let's say above 1200, just so that we're keeping this area sort of pressurized. Okay. All right. So we've built our automation circuit to govern the usage of these pumps. And now we can start to do a little ventilation. So let's update our goals. We've managed the CO2, we've installed the water sieve, now let's start doing some um, ventilation. All right, so we've got our next goal here, which is our ventilation system. So we've already started that project by providing the two pumps. And now what we want to do is actually vent the gas through the base. So um, you know how we have our our uh, algae diffuser over here, we're eventually going to be able to replace that with our uh, ventilation system that we're developing here. So uh, let's go ahead and pipe some of this gas. And um, I'm going to go ahead and just use regular vents for this particular project. And we'll do a bridge over the side. And now we can start distributing some gas. So first thing I want to do is make sure that I am, I am uh, getting far enough away from the sources of the oxygen. Again, uh, in order for these two machines to work, I have to use these pumps to push or pull the gas away and move it out into other areas of the base. So um, I don't want to put a vent down here because after all the oxygen is being sourced from here. I'll put a vent over here and uh, you know when we finally finish these tunnels that we'll use, uh, we can use those tunnels to help manage the uh, oxygen uh, flow. So. Uh, I think our first few vents are likely going to be in the main base. So let's go ahead and pull this vent across. Okay. And pop off a gate. And let's start doing a little bit of gas work. So what I like to do for this is uh, do a bridge with a gas vent inside the bridge, then a pipe 
to the vent. Um, I hook this up with a pressure sensor. So let's put a pressure sensor about here-ish. Okay. And then we'll say control the vent with that pressure sensor. So let's watch as the dupes get set on building this out. Oh, somebody's starving. Oh dear. Go grab something to eat, Lindsay. Oh, are we that hard up for food? I don't think so. Why aren't they eating the Hexalents? They have it available to them. Hmm. Okay, well this is starting to become a concern. If we're low on food, we need to address that. We do have additional fungal spores, so let's put those into place. Um, one, two, three dupes four dupes, but we're at six dupes. So we are at a pretty significant calorie deficit. So let's go ahead and throw some meal woods in place here to offset our, um, our low calories right now. That should stabilize the situation. And with our calories uh, at 14,000, we have several days worth of calories. We've got two days worth of calories here. So uh, we should be okay with this. Hopefully nobody will starve to death. Wouldn't that be horrible? Yee. Right, so working on the calorie problem, uh, and got a little bit of idleness here. So, um, still idle on that. Germs are going down. This is still working. That's really impressive. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll just knock out these two tiles to help pull up some more of that polluted oxygen. And then... Um, maybe I can even get down further. Get these mushrooms out of there. Put them up in my farm. It really help balance off my uh, farming. So, um, let's check our gases over here. So this has really helped stabilize that carbon dioxide issue. Um, we do have some sinks here, so I'll tile those over. That should help reduce the uh, pressure differences there. Yeah, go ahead and just hang out in the toxic gas zone. Sometimes they just choose the silliest places to just hang out. So, um, yeah, let's try and do some more solving. I 
get down here and get those dusk caps. You know, it might be a good idea to start to try and deal with uh, some natural planting. My duplicates could probably use a boost in morale, so uh, it might be a good idea for me to to uh, tease in a uh, park or nature preserve someplace. So let me see if I can figure out where that might happen. Uh, definitely can't put it by the farms. I mean, this is nice. This is nicer. Look at that. Three in a row. That's perfect. How big is this room? 105. That's almost exactly what you need for a uh, nice farm, nice uh, ranch. So, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. We'll, uh, we'll mine down in there and get a ranch going. want to be smart about the gases, so probably put a pressure door here. Head straight down. Another little project for my duplicates to spend their time working on. We're almost down into this pocket of polluted gas. Um, shouldn't be too bad. It's a low pressure. Um, it may just linger down there, but I'm really just after these plants anyway, so. Lost that dust cap at the last second due to the shift change. Uh oh, the stress is starting to kick in. Ruby's at one. Oh, no, she's not at 1% anymore. Ooh, some omelets. That's exactly what I need to raise spirits. Would have been nice to bring down a line of deodorizers with me to uh, deal with this polluted oxygen. Um, and I may actually do that now. But uh, I was a little hasty to try and get down there and deal with um, those plants. So let's go ahead and set that up so that we're not dealing with more slime lung bacteria. It is a little bit of an annoyance to have to wire them up now, but 
You know what? It's okay. I kind of spammed them back in the original game so bad anyways. It kind of makes sense that they wanted to add additional requirement for using them. Okay, so. We've built our ventilation system. And now we need to make sure that it'll open properly. So if it's below, say, 1500, it'll open the vent and release air. That's what we want. So let's go ahead and establish that vent someplace else as well. So um, I guess I can probably deconstruct this little chamber here. path for that gas line to go up that's sort of natural with the alignment of the base. So let's go ahead and pull it up this way. And we can go ahead and place a gas vent over here in a similar fashion. So pushing out with the bridge and then censoring it up so that the the uh, vent is controlled by a pressure sensor. finished. This will keep the gas pressure of this part of the base very stable. Okay, so again, if we're below 1500, go ahead and open up that vent. the oxygen flow. So, um, you know, we've got our two pumps working so that we're doing a solid kilogram uh, output. And uh, now we've got our vent open and it'll close and open and close and open and close till we're at a fairly stable temper temperature pressure of about 1500 kilograms per tile in this area of the base. So uh, what we're going to see is we're going to see a nice stable pressure occur. That's great. It'll keep the carbon dioxide down on our oxyfern plants. And it will allow us to dismantle this oxygen diffuser that we built, uh, as well as the storage bin and the very simple automation we rushed for at the beginning of the game. It's such a disappointment when you're off by a tile. And we'll talk more about this particular tile problem later. Uh, but, you know, it'll be soon time for us to discuss what's next. So, we've got our primeval ventilation system set up. And again, that's leaning on these alternate forms of oxygen production. The rust, the oxidizer, and the sublimation station. Um, Taking a look at our supplies, algae's two tons, uh, polluted dirt one and a half tons, rust 8.7 tons. So um, we're going to have loads of polluted dirt, especially as we start to penetrate into this area here. Notice there's polluted dirt tiles. Uh, so the sublimator will be able to run off of polluted dirt, but not only that, we have two water sieves that are in partial functioning. So uh, they also produce polluted dirt. So we'll always have a steady supply, supply of uh, polluted dirt for that machine. Fabulous. Okay, so uh, 
feel like we're in a nice place here. We've solved several issues. Got our carbon dioxide under control so that this petroleum generator isn't going to flood this whole part of the base with carbon dioxide and cause a serious issue. We've got a water sieve set up to supply our carbon skimmers so that they'll be able to run as needed. And um, we've created a very basic um, ventilation system. And uh, that ventilation system is now distributing air into the base that is relatively cool. You see it's 20 degrees centigrade. So uh, that cooling is in part due to the fact that we've built this um, cooling system using that liquid ethanol, which is very cold, to help reduce the temperature of the air coming through here from this rust deoxidizer. So, very, very, very nice beginner equipment. Now, this is huge. Getting this ventilation stream is going to be very, very beneficial for the next phase as we start to uh, attempt to breach some biomes that are uh, far away. And we don't have time for the kind of slow gas management that we've been playing all along. Now that we have this oxygen production set up, we can either pipe oxygen directly to the zone that we want pressurized, or we can go with oxygen masks, which is uh, something that I'm very interested in trying. Um, so, uh, kind of excited that we've completed this part of the task with some automation and some nice ventilation in place. And uh, hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope your cat enjoyed the episode, if you have one. So uh, with that, we'll sign off and uh, be seeing you.